Hey guys, Miracle Max again. Today I'm looking at a massive big LED light, spotlight. It's a single LED. Um, it's got a charge connection at the bottom here. And the guy's actually used a, a power supply um, for his LED. He didn't really have many instructions. So why isn't it working? Let's have a look at it together. So I'm really not sure how this LED light works, apart from this power supply was given to me with the light. Now it has the socket that goes into the light itself. It has a normal uh, configuration for a cigarette lighter. Uh, we have a positive on the end here, and these side straps are earths as it goes into the cigarette lighter. But this particular one, if we have a close look, um, it says here that it's uh, 12 volt input which is what we would normally expect for a car um, cigarette lighter but it's an adjustable power output you see it says from 1.5 through to 12. Now when I got it it was set on the 9 volt range so just keep that in mind. So I guess the next thing we need to do is actually test this power supply and see if it works. You can see that I've got it hooked up to my bench power supply it's on the 12 volt range as you can see. If we come down to here I've hooked it up to my power supply as I mentioned before with the positive uh, being hooked up to the end uh, connection there and the side strap has an earth on it. So naturally being turned on we would expect it to have a, a little LED illuminating there but you can see it's not working. Let's pull it apart and see why. So disassembly is quite easy on this one. You just unscrew the end knob there that comes apart and hey presto look at this a fuse. So what's the first thing we start with? You start with the simple things first, don't you? Visually, it looks like it's blown, but let's test it with a multimeter. It's got a blown fuse. Well, is this a simple fix? Matter of replacing the fuse, let's put a new one in and see if we can get a power output out of this little power supply. So despite my power supply being on 12 volts, coming through, being connected exactly the same way with a tested brand new fuse, you can see my output is uh, clearly not what we're after. We're not getting any output whatsoever, are we? If we have a look on our multimeter here. And of course, our LED is not showing up either. So this little power supply is not well. Why did the fuse blow? And I've been thinking about it. This particular light here, what's the actual design of it? Um, the customer had no idea. He just connected this power supply to it, hoping that it would work but perhaps there's something wrong with this light as well as this or the light has caused this to blow. So I'm going to actually pull this light apart next and see if I can figure out the design and how this should be tested. This light is uh, quite interesting. It's got a, a very very bright LED at the front of it so I've been told. Um, the design simply has a handle that unscrews so let's unscrew that and see what's hidden inside. Okay, so there's just a little connector there. Pull that apart so we can get the actual LED out the road. No, no surprises in there, just a basic LED um, light. Inside here, I've already unscrewed it so we can pop that apart. And hey presto, we actually have a battery pack in here. And what's the battery pack rating? Let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit. Can you see what it says? It says 3.7 volts. Now, what did the customer put it on? Nine volts. No wonder the poor thing kicked up a stink. So does this work? Is the battery flat? Is the light blown? Um, what should I do next? Well, what I'm going to do is put 3.7 volts to this battery pack and see if the LED light will then shine. That will tell me the integrity of this little circuit. So here's the uh, light in its basic form, apart from the actual LED light housing itself. Here's the charging circuit um, as well as the switch and the battery. As I mentioned um, I will now put 3.7 volts as uh, stated on the battery here and see if we can actually charge this battery and see if the LED will work. By connecting it to my other power supply where I can limit the current on it then that way I can make sure that I don't create any damage. So if we flip it on we've got very low current going into it um, at the moment the voltage is quite low 
Might drop that current back a fraction, bring the voltage up a touch. Whoops. There we go. And we're now starting to charge the battery. The question is, with a little bit of power going into that, and of course from the, the uh, power supply itself, will the LED light work? And the answer to that is yes. We know several things. We know that this charge port here is okay. We know that the circuitry here is okay. We know that the LED is okay. What I believe has happened is that rather than using a charger for this particular light that the customer has and charging up the battery, they've simply supplied tw uh, nine volts to this battery pack. The power supply itself has had a bit of a hissy fit. It's blown the fuse and I'm sure it has other circuit faults. But the thing is that what we need for this is a power supply that's going to be able to charge 3.7 volts. So that's what I need to see if I can find in my um, collection of charges. And I'll also see if I can repair this variable power supply at this point too. I've had a rummage through my collection of uh, phone charges, etc. in the shed. And I've found one that should do the trick. Uh, it says that it is 4.2 volts at 1 amp. So that should do the trick nicely. And in actual fact, this connector goes straight into that socket there. So rather than go through my um, power supply as I have uh, over there, I will now hook it up to the official or one of the official charges and see how it goes. In the meantime, I'll have a look at that power supply, see if I can get that sorted too. I've now got it hooked up to my official charger, the one that I found. That should do the trick nicely. Um, just to keep an eye on it, I've, been, uh, I've hooked up my voltmeter to make sure that it's not going to overcharge or undercharge. So we can see that it's red. As soon as that turns green, it should be charged. In the meantime, let's turn our attention to that variable power supply, the one that was uh, brought in mistakenly with this actual LED light. When there's over voltage on circuitry, it's quite often the component that quite often fails are the diodes. Um, in this particular case, of course, we have the LED itself, which is a diode. Also tucked away under a uh, transistor here is a diode as well. That's discolored. I've tested both of these on board, but I'm not happy with the results. So I'm going to pull them off and test them and um, make sure that they're okay. Also, if you have a close look, I don't know if you can see it. Let me get it in frame. But this little IC, notice that grey patch just, just, just there. I'm not happy with that. That may be overheated where um, the over voltage created that problem. I'm not sure. I may replace that if I can get a hold of one, but I'll check other components, but particularly those diodes off board. I've already tested that main diode um, up near the, the inductor over here before on the transistor. Um, I'm just about to check the LED. Now I've disconnected one of the legs. Um, when testing a, an LED, which is in fact a diode, light emitting diode, you need to do it with the diode checker. So you can see this little symbol here. And up here, in my case, I need to press that button. I need to get that little symbol up here. So when you're checking an LED, what you need to do is um, connect one lead to one leg and then the other lead to the other leg. Now, remember, I've disconnected that from the board. That's why I'm doing it there. I'm getting a reading of OL, which means an open circuit, which is OK. It should only read one way. Now, if I switch my leads around the other way and put my positive there and my negative here, notice what happens. First of all, I get a reading. Um, 1.7 in this particular case, but notice that also my LED flashes on and off. That's because my multimeter feeds about 3 volts through this circuit and it's enough to actually bring the LED on. So um, yes, this LED is okay. The other diode is okay, so I guess the next step is that little IC that appears to be burnt out. It's now the next day. The uh, battery has been on charge overnight. We're now have been given the green light by the charger, which is excellent news. So what's next? Well, let's just cruise down here and uh, make sure that the light itself works um, before we claim that side of things a fix. So we disconnect it from the charger, turn it on, and yes, we have a, an awesome light. So that's part of the equation solved. Next side of things we need to focus on is, of course, our 
um, power supply that was mistakenly hooked up to this light. Um, so I'll continue on with that. I completed soldering the LED and this diode down here after I tested them and lo and behold the little LED has now come back on which is excellent news but I'm still concerned about this little transistor here which um, appears to me not to be working but I'll show you what I mean it's not powered up at the moment so don't panic I'll just flip it over in my voice now normally when you're testing a, a transistor you put it into diode mode because really a transistor is just made up of a couple of um, diodes um, so I'll put my multimeter if you can see it I hope into the diode mode over here pressing my diode button and I'll just check a couple of uh, connections here I don't know if it's a base or collector or emitter I've got no idea but have a look at the voltage reading there it's 0.1 which is extremely low if I go to the next one it's 0.1 but if I go backwards I should get a different reading um, between those two pins now I'm getting identical reading between that pin uh, positive and negative and now if I go negative and positive I get exactly the same reading so to me that may be shorted internally um, I'll need to actually unsolder it to check it another way you can do is to put it on the voltage reading and do your check again and if it's shorted out it'll give you almost true zero as you can see there we're getting zero zero point two so that's almost true zero which is an indication to me that this transistor is shorted but I really need to pull it off board to uh, check it out thoroughly just to highlight the importance of testing components off the circuit board if you're unsure remember how I said I, th I felt that this little transistor was a bit on the dodgy side and had earthed internally after I've pulled it out it's actually in perfect condition so I've got to look further um, obviously it's being pulled down to earth somewhere along the line and I've got to trace that next on the list are the electrolytic capacitors I've checked them this one over here and this fella here and they're all fine I checked it with my ESR meter and they were fine this little fella over here is a ceramic capacitor and if you have a look it's quite discolored usually they're quite a, a bright green color but this is actually this is quite dark I've tested it and it should read it's a um, 2a 102k so it should actually read um, 1 nanofarad so let's have a look and see what it reads as you can see it's reading the 10 10 odd um, nanofarad range now that's clearly not right but once again I'd like to test it off circuit but uh, it's certainly discolored so that may be a reason may have burnt out causing the system not to work so I've pulled this off board and tested it it appears to be had it it also feels like it's split on the end and if you have a look at the two side by side this is the new one here and this is the old one you can see this is quite browned off in comparison this is nice and green and that's browned off so I'm going to replace that anyway and hopefully that will sort out part of our issue so after replacing the uh, ceramic capacitor on the other side over here um, I noticed there was a track that was partially damaged up here so I've bypassed that with a, just a uh, plain wire so now it's time to test it okay let's uh, power it up and see what we've got it's got a bit of a dicky connection at the uh, connector so I'll just have to hold it so we've got 1.8 and you can see the little LED light is lit up down there we'll switch it over one more 3.2 we've got 4.7 we've got 6.2 7 7.8 9.4 10 uh, 19.2 keep in mind I know this appears to be higher voltages than they should be but this is not under load so you'll always end up with a higher voltage than um, you'll actually have on the reading on your output thing there but that's okay once it's under load it'll bring it down to the appropriate voltages mentioned on the case so that's a fix yay for us so we managed to get two repairs out of the one job simply because someone didn't follow instructions I guess they didn't get the instructions that came with it or perhaps they picked up the item without instructions first of all we've got a light that works 
Um, I've now supplied him with a charger that should work okay. It's designed for that particular LED system. Um, I think it was a 3.7 volt battery pack, so that that will handle it and it is charged overnight, not a problem. The second issue that we had was the power supply that he hooked up, the variable power supply. We can see that it goes from, what is it, 1.5 I think it is, through to 12, and we now have that working, so that's good. Um, mainly it was that little um, capacitor that was faulty, but there was certainly a few other issues along the way. The damaged track, um, some dry uh, solder joints, etc. So the important thing is that we've got it up and running. It's important that you follow manufacturer's instructions, including charging systems for batteries, etc. Don't just guess, that's where you end up blowing stuff up. That's what's happened in this case. Hopefully you've learned something guys. I've enjoyed this repair, it's given me an opportunity to learn a few extra things. Um, I did quite a bit of testing along the way, but ultimately I found the result and that's the important thing. Um, learning never ends and it's always a big learning curve when you find a new repair. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you did, uh, please give it a like. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and feel free to comment down below. So until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. Catch you later.